We are now five months into the global COVID pandemic, and we have taken a lot of steps to protect ourselves from this disease. Masking, washing our hands, not touching our face, social distancing, and above all, avoiding public spaces and crowded areas. Tens of millions of Americans are out of work. Tens of millions more are working from home because of these measures. Similar measures have been taken all over the world and for the same reason. It's also been two weeks since George Floyd was killed. All over the country, people are protesting. There have been widespread riots, and yes, the mass protests are being repeated all over the world. Mass protests during a global pandemic? Oh, you know that I have some roasted opinions on that matter. In six months, we've seen a total of 6.9 million confirmed cases of COVID-19. Over 400,000 are dead from the disease. According to the official statistics, nowhere in the world has seen more infections and deaths than the United States as far as absolute numbers go. And most countries have seen fewer infections and deaths as a percentage of their population. The U.S. numbers are pretty harsh. 1.9 million infected and 109,000 dead, with only 500,000 recovered so far. There are still over 1.3 million active cases of COVID in the U.S., and we still have about 21,000 new cases diagnosed every day. Naturally, with a communicable disease that is potentially lethal, especially to those who have weakened immune systems, steps and measures were implemented to limit the spread. The federal government made recommendations, but ultimately left the measures up to the governors and the mayors. This made sense because the infection rates vary wildly from state to state based on conditions. Densely populated New York has over 377,000 confirmed cases, with 206,000 in New York City. Sparsely populated Alaska has 545, 266 of which are in Anchorage. Let's stick a pin in that and look at something else. On May 25th, George Floyd was murdered in police custody. The outrage about yet another African-American male killed by a cop while already in handcuffs was immediate, and civil unrest followed soon after. Protests rapidly devolved into riots, first in Minneapolis and quickly spreading to other cities all over the U.S. The rioting is subsiding, but protesting is still going on, with massive crowds coming together to demand justice for George Floyd, to demand police reform, and in some cases to demand that the police force be disbanded. We don't have to get into the merits of the positions raised in those protests. People have a right to peaceful assembly and to petition the government for redress of grievances. There isn't a right to burn down buildings, ransack shops, destroy vehicles, or to physically assault people. But I digress. Here's the issue, and you probably figured it out already. If we are just now starting to relax lockdown provisions, and daily new cases are still hovering about 21,000, then why is protesting a good idea from a public health standpoint? Let's go to the experts. Jennifer Nuzzo, an epidemiologist, stated on Twitter that she believes that systemic racism is a greater public health threat than COVID-19. Tom Fryden, the former director of the CDC, is saying much the same thing. In order to fight COVID more effectively, we simply have to take on systemic racism by protesting. Now hold on there. How do mass gatherings prevent the spread of this disease more effectively than everyone staying home except for essential activities? Well, according to these experts, the virus doesn't spread well outdoors. If people maintain social distancing and properly wear masks, then these protests shouldn't become the source of a second wave of infections. We're not inconsistent, they say. We recommended that people isolate, but we never said that they had to stay indoors. That's true. But medical experts advised the mayors and the governors, who responded by telling people to stay home and ordering them to close non-essential businesses for the duration of the crisis. And the protesters are abiding by social distancing requirements, all right. They're properly wearing those masks, too. The politicians are coming out to speak to these crowds, and they are abiding by these protocols, aren't they? Sometimes two things can be true simultaneously. Sometimes they can't. It depends on the situation and which two things are both supposed to be true. Either COVID is such an enormous risk that isolation is essential, 
or protesting the death of George Floyd is of such critical importance that mass protesting is essential. Both cannot be true at the same time. Does anyone actually think that COVID-19 will become less infectious or less lethal because of social injustice? Does anyone believe that protesters will abide by social distancing protocols and properly wear masks? The fact that politicians are not just addressing these protests, but actively supporting them in some cases, tells me that they probably have another motive for both the protests and the mass lockdowns. So I looked for that motive. Now there's a correlation between the party affiliation of state governors and the strictness of lockdown measures. There's also a correlation between the strictness of those lockdown measures and the economic impact of COVID. There's also a correlation between party affiliation and population density, and a correlation between population density and the rate of spread during communicable disease outbreaks. Correlation isn't causation, though. By itself, correlation isn't enough to prove anything. But, and I have to raise this point, it's a presidential election year. Trump is running for re-election, and his single greatest campaign strength has been the economy. It's booming. Or at least it was until COVID lockdowns made 40 million jobs disappear. Trump's greatest weakness is the perception of him as the deplorable-in-chief. Anything which is deplorable can and will be used against Trump in the court of public opinion, especially when he starts ordering that federal assets be deployed to stop the rioting. When you add in that information, perhaps the elected officials and experts supporting mass protests right after rigorously enforcing lockdowns makes sense. It might just be that their responses are calculated to swing voter opinion going into November. After all, does anyone remember what the most important issue in the United States was right before May 25th? That's right, mail-in balloting because people couldn't possibly practice social distancing and other safety protocols while waiting to cast their ballots at the polls. Protesting, yes, but standing in line to cast a ballot, oh no, that's not possible. Feel free to challenge me on this, but bring a lunch if you plan to convince me, because you'll be at it all day.